hands from Perry Sandals. Down on the borders of uh, South Australia, New South Wales and Victoria. From out west. The three Australia. nodes from the Three River District. Now these sands, that fine, they've got a magnetic field, of course. I'll place them between the walls today and they will show back up there at the sand hills within the three year period. The magnetic force is dragon and these will go back to the, these are what I call the sleeping dragons. We've got the male and the female, which I'll be placing here today. The compass, the north and southern atmosphere. I'll open them up for sure. They're beautiful. <sighs> Gold sand. It's a magnetic field. Yep. So it's an electromagnetic. It's sandstone image. walls here. This, this sandstone here, this sand, is from the plains. It's 400, 400 kilometre radius, a flat land. Yet we've got sand hills that never go away. They're always there. Been there for hundreds of years. We get dust storms, winds, high winds. They never blow away. Never blow away. You go today, they're still there tomorrow. You go away five years, come back five years, they're still there. Two sleeping dragons stand on top, they're actually dragons when you look at it. You watch the sun go down, watch the shadows, you see the dragon. Both sides. One sleeps against the mother tree, the other one sleeps at the tail of the other dragon. They cross over. As the moon comes and goes. It's almost like a waxing and a, a waning. Waxing and a waning. It's a balance between the magnetic fields. And the scenes show the story and how it all works. Well, that's why we have a lot of what is known as compressed energy at the minute, you know, with all the planets now being direct. That compressed energy is actually drawing our, our Earth at, into a deeper part of the photon belt. And within the photon belt, that's where the electromagnetic connection really lies. Yeah. Do it at drifting. It's glowing. Want some in your hand? We anchor heaven on earth as we return to the very, very source of where we came. It's not the sand of the beach as you get on the beach. It's not a coastal sand, it's an inland outback sand. It's finer than the sand you'll get in the Sahara Desert. That's amazing. Right First it's in Egypt, nowhere near the fine sand of what we have here. I was rich in minerals. Take a bit more here. <laughs> it brings a great peace, doesn't it? You can feel a real big, beautiful wave of peace. You know, as you as, as you feel that. In your hands. And then we'll do the we've got the small piece here. Okay, nice to meet you, Wayne. See the north and south. Hang on. Yep. See the face of north and south. Now we're going to change it and do the east. East to west. East to west. From the eastern wall. Magic, our sands. We 
Jimmy Sands are from the sand, Perry Sandals. Yep. Not far from a place they call Snake Island. And Snake Island is the mouth of the Murray and Darling River, where these sands come from. And the waters, the two waters become one. And from my knowledge, there's an Aboriginal queen. Bride taken from Australia to become a queen in Egypt. From what I can understand is the meeting place of this woman is at the Snake River, mm -hmm. Snake Island, which is down at Wentworth, New South Wales. A place that is a sacred place to the Aborigines, and it used to be a meeting place for all the tribes. Where they used to barter and swap. It's like a market we call it today. Mm -hmm. But imagine meeting your bride there, or the woman meeting their groom there. It's like what we call today a dating site. But back in their day, it was an actually Aboriginal dating site. And that way their, their tribes didn't interbreed with one another. They shared between their tribes. One tribe shared their bride, one shared their groom. Mm -hmm. They all went to different parts of the, the village for the land. That we call Australia the Garden of Eden. Many from overseas come and claim their brides or grooms as well. Some took slaves. Today, we're putting it back. We're learning our knowledge. We're using our temples. We're between the walls today. The compass is our temples, which leads us to our crown, the center, the core, which is where we're learning today to share for tomorrow. When our children are grown, we're going to remind them about our temples. The two temples up here and our crown up here because we are all equal. The earth's round and there's no one king or queen at the end of the day. And, and I'd, like, I'd like to add that the fact of the matter remains is that up until last year, the veil of amnesia was so thick that a lot of this knowledge was still very much shrouded in a kind of a, a hidden mythology and now it's there for everybody. It's now kind of surfaced out of the ether, you know, because the energetic flow of all of what we've been going through, all of what we've become, has now manifested real in this very, very place and the place that we find ourselves reflecting in it. And what, are, what are two temples if we can't stand between them and become those two temples? Mm. These, are our, these are our book. Our yeah. world has left us for tomorrow. We're here, we're children today, still learning for tomorrow. Our world has left these as the first books in the world. Man didn't write these books. Knowledge did. That's right. We're here for knowledge. We're all here to learn. Now if I lay down to here today and use my temple, I'll become the book. I'll be the centre of the court. And anyone that comes here will learn the same. I'll lay down, become the book, use your temple. Which, which way do you think one would face if they laid down? Would they face north to south or south to north, which, which way? Well, because, of, because the temples are facing north-south, Yeah. the sun rises east-west. The east-west shows me I've got the wings from the equator, I'm centered. Okay. I've got a balance on the equator, so I've got our two wings. Now the sun gives me energy and the moon gives me balance. Okay. Two creations. And when I'm centered between the, the north and the south, how can I be stable without being balanced? Mm -hmm. I've got to be able to balance. So I centre myself into the centre of the core to balance. And I'll start at the top of the tomb mm -hmm. and work my way down through the book. But I'll have to go to the bind of the book, the centre of the book, and read from the centre outwards. It's a bit hard to read from the, the outside inwards. Mm -hmm. That's my temples are from inside, not outside. The centre point. And this is when you centre your vertebrae, the three, 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 in the in the core of the centre. Now me looking up there now, at the angle of this temple, the walls, mm -hmm. I'll be looking at a 33 degree angle with my head raised. Absolutely. If you go, you stand down the bottom of here, and I'll lay up here, and I'll show you a picture. How old the group? Yep. The compass. I'll explain it. I'll explain it a bit better up here for you. Now I lay down. I'm becoming the compass. I've got 
east wall, we've got the south wall. East and south. Uh, east and west wall. West wall. And behind me is the north and the south. Now if I lay down, I use my two temples. I close my eyes, touch the two walls. Touch the two walls. And become the book. Become the book. Learn from the book. Use my mind, my thoughts. Look up there, become the book. Focus. Now the sun is centered into my mind. This is how I become the book. I learn. I look at the bigger picture. I become the book. This is what our elders are trying to tell us. How to become a book to create and learn and become the knowledge and how to share the knowledge. And I learnt this all through totem spirit of nature, animals, becoming the animal myself and learning. Why don't you give us your background about becoming the goanna, the sun eater? The goanna, when I first come in, the goanna led me, led me to a stick and the stick led me to those temples. And then those temples lead me further down the track to my totem spirits, which taught me not to eat. And I haven't eaten for over three years, three and a half years now, because the animals I learn in my totem do not eat your totem. That's what I've learned. Now today I've learned I don't need food because energy, I can survive, I live on energy. And I, create myself in the sun, the moon. There's none of that around. I've got the energy of the star, I've become a star. My mind, my temples can create what I want, who I want to be. I can use my image to know from these walls. These pictures show me how to create things, become things, and build tomorrow for my kids, my children. I pass it down like they did. We've got to learn from where we're going to start. We all start at the beginning, the centre, become the centre of creation. Point zero. My weight went from 33, I went down to 33 kilo to become the skeleton, the key to my knowledge, to learn. Now today, I'm 66 kilo. And I'm here today explaining where I've been, the pathway. The pathway, the illuminated pathway. The pathway that I've been shown by the spirits my learning, my teaching. And for me to explain, to teach your children today, remind them, we've got two temples, we've got a crown. The earth is round and we all are one. There's no king, no queen. We're all equal and we're here to share, to lift, to raise each other each day. And tomorrow will be another day. But as you said, we're actually creating the future. We're, we're dealing in the future and then tomorrow they'll actually be able to read and experience what we created today. That's it. We're creating today for tomorrow. We're in the southern atmosphere today, learning. These are the ripples that create the conscious waves of tomorrow. And tomorrow, what we say today and what we explain today, will go to the northern atmosphere tomorrow, which will create the wave for the children of tomorrow. The children of the sun. The children, yeah. Magical. And we're here for, not just for us, we're here for everyone. Well, this is the co-creation of all humanity coming into its own and realising that within our beingness lies the answer to every question and every concern we've ever posed for ourselves because the, the lens of our perception is something that we cleanse and clear every day by not allowing the distortion of the third density to infect or affect our energy field. And when we're in a place like this where we ground to Gaia through the ancestral spirits of the great grandmothers and the great grandfathers who have come before us to lead this, the, the way to, to illuminate our path, we return to source. This is why we are all fractals of first source and we're co-creating the universe in divine harmony. We all, we all can stand up and read a book. Nobody can lay down and become the book by using the temples, the two minds, the temples, the centre, the nose to the crown. The nose is a pathway, two, two airways into your crown, which opens your crown in between those walls. 
the beginning and the ending, knowing both night and day. But is there truly mm, a beginning yeah. and an ending, Wayne, or is it more yeah. about essentially a recycled plan? There's no, no ending to it. It's yeah. just continuous. We keep coming back, we keep pushing, pushing for further, trying to straighten these walls up. We're trying to create more, to build more, a better world, mm -hmm. a better environment, teaching each other each day. Not going back, like, like the temples keep showing me every day. Only a couple of days ago I learned that the Egyptians had a mobile phone back in 3,960 BC it was. It was a mobile phone back then. And there's a picture of it on the temples and the walls. And here we are today, still just creating this phone. So it just shows you how far we actually go, and what, what we created and what they created. We seem to be going backwards instead of forwards because we've got to use our temples and open our crowns for more knowledge to move forward. So moving forward is for tomorrow, the future. The future is our children. And that's where we're going. That's where we're heading into the future. 2019 is actually the future, a new beginning. Two and nine is 11. And 11. 11, Mastering 11. Mastering you, flattening the door. And creating the new world. And what a place to be. I am your dream. Absolutely. Living the dream. Can I have a live of the dream and lay there too? Yeah, brother. It's all yours. Purity of divine light and sound, the sound vibration is felt through the cosmic channel, receiving the energy by breathing in the I am and exhaling the we are, by breathing in satisfaction and exhaling gratitude. By breathing in worthiness and exhaling valor, we are aligned and fearless fifth dimensional energy warriors here to hold space on planet Gaia for all to share, for all to collaborate, for all to co-create. And we ask this through the divine peace and grace of our true and our higher selves as we emit the beam of truth, the beam of connectivity with the universe, within the, within the universe, within the multiverse, within the multiverse of the subatomic multiverse. And we receive that light and we draw it deep into our heart space and we emanate that love in all directions, knowing no fear, Knowing no concern, pressure, stress, issues, all illusory. And understanding that our true connection to the oneness lies in the communion we have with nature. And I ask this through the power of all my guides and all the heavenly armies and all those that have come before us. Through the grace of God, Amen. Reconciliation and conciliation come together and to know that they 
I won with the land. But the land is won by the land. The land is white with 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 the land. Within that vibration, we draw a frequency that waves our east and our west and our north and our north and our south. The compass of oneness that we hold deep within every pore and every cell of our being, I offer this prayer through the great grandmothers and the great grandfathers of Bambara, of Lion Island, of the Darking Young Land. We are so blessed and so grateful to be a part of. We respect and honour. We learn as Burai. We are all Burai, children of the sun. And we are here in the divine peace and grace, in the rays of the prana of the sun, to receive knowledge, to receive the teaching, to receive the wisdom, to become the light to be the sound, to be the highest vibration and ultimately to emanate the perfect harmonic resonance with the planet. Thank you, thank you, thank you times three. Thank you, thank you, thank you times six. Thank you, thank you, thank you times nine. Thank you. Wow, I felt amazing. The marsh flies are dancing. Now, John, do you think you can you can manage it yourself? Would you like to try? Yeah, sure. Okay. Just lay back there. We send prayers and blessings to John for healing, for health, for connectivity. Just let it all go, man. Let it all go. Pardon? I need something for my neck. You need something for your neck, okay. A little gecko that came down and said hi to us. You had a gecko come and say hello? Yeah. I had a beautiful green water skink come and say hello. Nice. They are our avatars today because they are connected. All four, all four of their limbs are always connected to every aspect of the four elements, earth, air, fire and water of north, south, east and west. The lizard, the gecko, the goanna, all, always connected, always grounded to Gaia. So you, you feel very blessed to have someone like that come down and support and assist you in your journey. Close your eyes and, and the walls. And touch the wall. Touch the wall. Feel the out. Try and try and stretch to this wall here. That's it. Yeah. So Wayne, while you were laying there, you know, and creating that, you know, reason, anchoring the portal. The reason today for being here today is opening a portal with the rains and the floods to flush out the, Mar the Darling and the Murray River. And the fish kill and everything else. Everything's dying. The river's actually dying at the moment. Yeah. You know, the rains have already started. The typhoons, typhoons up in New Queensland, the heavy rains are up the far north of Queensland. We need them more south. So we're coming here today and crossing the sands. We're making a pathway for the rains and the water to travel to the rivers. So that the energy from this temples today are going to be drifted into the rivers tomorrow. 
It's exactly what I do with the crystal, crystal energy. Today, doing the magic. We're creating a force, a force of energy, with the magnetic field of the sands to help travel to the deserts to need the, need the water. Well, being magnetic, it knows exactly where it needs to go. It's going to stay magnetic north and just drag all that pure, you know, energy into those polluted waterways. It's going to drag the rain clouds as it travels from here. The magnetic field of the sand will drift it back to the back to Wentworth, the Snake Island, we call it, where the mouth of the two rivers meet. Mm. Darling and the Murray. Darling and the Murray, the Great Darling River and the Great Murray River. They both meet at Snake Island, we call it. They're Aboriginal sacred, sacred meeting place. And the Sioux Sands will bond there. They call it the Sleeping Dragons, the male and female, yin and yang, whatever you want to call it, but we call it, we actually call it balance, balance of nature, where two atoms become one and form. And can I ask a question, Wayne? What sort of timeline are we talking about the, the invocations that are set here in Bambara before we'll receive the, the blessing and the magic of the Great Flood? Within, within from today, it could be anywhere up to three months in your travel. But I reckon it'll be within the three months. Okay, so within, within three month time, time yeah. frame. There'll be a big flood that'll flush the rivers. It'll be interesting to see if it will coincide with any of the pending eclipses that are still due both solar and lunar eclipses still due. Because obviously that polarizes the energy, you know, it, it actually... we're using today, we're using the, the, nine, the nine planets that are aligned at the moment, we're using the energy field of the East, the Garden of Eden. The, the Garden of Eden is in alignment at the moment where the East, East Pole is raised nine degrees, not 90 degrees. It's raised nine degrees because, as scientists say, zero, is the equator, and the equator the minus is zero. Mm -hmm. Zero means, means minus, take away, so it's actually nine degrees. Nine degrees. So if you look at the North Pole, the North Pole is actually nine degrees northwest, which is 333 degrees, which equals nine again. So with these two nines becoming 18, and one centered in the middle of the equator, becomes 19. 19, 2019. 2019. And two and nine is eleven. Two and nine is eleven. And being a master here, that's why we're here today, creating. Mm, yeah. We're creating the, the, the water, the flood, clean the rivers. We're going to revive, resuscitate the river. Dude, I'm the so grateful. Rivers. Dude, I'm so grateful for you saying that because that's exactly the mindset of why I believe my being was brought back from Melbourne and you contacted me 24 hours after I arrived back here to say I'm going to go to the Bambara temple to do this work, this, this work with the sand, and that, are you available, would you come up? And look, at we're both in exactly a reflective lens of self because we're here to purify and preserve. And what brought me here today as well was the totem spirit of the Kookaburra. The Kookaburra is a group gathering. Kookaburra means meeting a people, people gathering together to share. And at the end of the day, we're going to laugh because the creation we're creating for tomorrow. And tomorrow, our dreams will be flooding the river. We're flushing. Awesome. We're creating life. We're going to re rejuvenate the life of the river. Reborn, as many would say. Yes. But we're rejuvenating. We're, we're learning. And we're washing the lens and returning reborn to the earth without the distortion that we once viewed everything through. We're here today taking a piece of the book. This is a, a billion stories in this book, but mm. today we're just taking one story. One story. The one story is to claim the rivers, the water. We're troubled, in troubled waters today. The rivers are dying. Mm. So we're going to take that bridge today and we're going to flood the rivers tomorrow and flush them. And that way we've got the bridge to cross tomorrow. And the fish deep for our children for that future to come. We'll continue the sustenance they require in order to grow and mature and become wise, yeah. To see the light the rivers create. Beautiful man. Touch your heart. That's why we're here. Touch your heart. We're here. Touch your heart. We're here. That's why we're here. We're here. Join the temples. And we're so grateful. Join the temples. With the heart. But it all comes from the crown. The crown up here. Our minds open. The memories. Some call it magic, we call it magic. You've got to believe in magic. Maybe some might see it, and many of us do. Magic is all around us in the imprint that we create for ourselves, you know. 
and that imprint is something that is, is less cloudy, you know. Magic's for the ones that can really. Yeah. And if you can't believe in yourself, you can't believe you in know tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've always said that now in 2019, the biggest thing that I think all of us are learning more than anything is the art of self love. Being able to draw self love into our unified energy field and then externalize that in connection with all things a, in existence. I had a doctor ask me a question because I don't eat. I had a doctor ask me a question, why don't I eat? And I said, because I believe in myself. At the time I was suicidal and I thought I learned a lesson, I'll starve myself. Today, four years down the track, I'm still here. I hope and starve, but I'm not dead. And then I asked the doctor the question, why do you get out of bed? Why are you here today? You're here to save a life. Without that thought, without that you believing in yourself, you wouldn't get out of bed. Now, I don't eat, without me believing I can survive, I wouldn't be here today. You wouldn't be here today. So we've both got our beliefs, and at the end of the day, his book doesn't tell me the story, and my book won't tell him. We've all got our own pathway, and our own creation. And my creation's creating a pathway for others. Maybe they might be like me. Absolutely. But we're alienated because we are divided. And our minds up here, it's in minds, two chances to divide us till we can open our crown to become one. And at the end of the day, we're all one because our halos are the one. All planet Earth. We all live on Earth. Absolutely. Earth's round. There's no king, no queen, no one sits at the head of the table. And they say there was 13 knights at the round table. How can you balance the round table without having 13? Because you've got six either side, and one in the centre, there's 13. There's the 13. Exactly, just like the 13 star side. So at the end of the day, you've got to have one centre. So at the end of the you have yeah, sent it to court. You've always got to be a court. Sent it to you. Yes. That's the point. We're all part of that. Absolutely. You. At the end of the day, don't forget yourself. You are the creation. You are yourself. Remind yourself who you are. Talk to yourself. Learn yourself. Before you can share tomorrow. Absolutely. Thanks, Wayne. All right. Appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks for I sharing. Talk from spirit. Being the spirit. I don't talk from a person, I talk from the spirit. From the spirit. Built within me. Like someone called me a walking dead. But I'm a walking spirit, put it that way. Absolutely. I'm laughing with the kookaburras. That's why we're here today, to share our knowledge. Great. Thanks, mate. Have a dream. He's going on my uh, Facebook. That's all right. Hello. Hello. This is the opening shot of our whole thing. Just to have this lizard here. This is the totem. This is the totem for our work today. He's very happy. He's the spirit of the wall today. Notice the birds are being very quiet. Very quiet. We're going to hear them on the way out. Even the cicadas decided to give us the peace we needed. Hey, we the spider, see the spider. Yeah. Yeah, we so I want to know more about the spiders and what, what they do. Oh yeah. You see me on the web? Yeah. I can only just pick that up but not really. Hey buddy, I like you better. Let's see if we can. Yeah, I do love this. Oh, the sentiments of Tom.